can we talk about what happened with Devon? What is going on everybody, Zach RC here, welcome back to the channel, welcome along to chapter number 8 of our Breaking Point 2 playthrough on F1 23, following up from our last episode in Bahrain, which went absolutely brilliantly. If you guys did miss the episode, make sure to go check that one out before you see this one, and check out the playlist too to get yourself caught up on the story so far. Right, so last episode in Bahrain, came home first with Devin Butler with, with Connor Sports, a fantastic start to the season, and as a result, social media is absolutely a light raving about Devon's brilliant performance and a very good start to the season for the team as well and a brilliant start to Kasper Ackerman's return to Formula 1 this time as a team principal with Connor Sport of course Andrea Connor stepping down from that role and again the people are definitely enjoying the fact that he's back in the sport and the fact that we've got Devon and Aiden driving the car look at our quick emails here Kasper sends an email out saying I'm absolutely humbled I knew Connor Sport were good but that was something else and asking Aiden and Devon to slow down a bit next time he's still settling and couldn't actually keep up but he's got a lot of people looking over his shoulder and Devin Aiden making his life much easier. So a good start to Casper's career as a team principal with Connor Sport. An uh, update from the Devon's PA, Kay and Henderson. I'm not going to get legal involved after all. This is after the last episode where we had an issue in the uh, in, in Devon's garage with um, with one of his cars, potentially. And there's some, some kind of problem. Someone's hit, one of the builders has hit the door on one of his cars. So... A big job for him, so he needs to know if he's having to continue with the work. So no issues there. So that's actually a little side story there. Hop on to the next chapter now. Looking into chapter 8 of the story. Going to the Australian Grand Prix several weeks later. A strong start to the season for Connor Sport as a team in high spirits. The paddock heads to Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. So it should be a very exciting affair all around there. So we'll now jump right into this next chapter. In the little build up before the race itself. So look again over the news. Interview with uh, superstar Callie Mayer. Who of course won the F2 Championship a couple of episodes ago. We did that with her, but no seat for her in F1 this season. So I have to see if she gets involved in the story later on. But hopefully we get to see her about, because of course we did quite well with her in F2. Uh, of course, social media array with the potential of Connor Sport in the race today. It's looking like there'll be a massive shakeup in the midfield. Connor Sport looking to continue on with the brilliant performances. I'm assuming they did well in Saudi Arabia as well as go with Devon's victory. So hopefully we can continue to try and pull out a good race for Devon and potentially for Aiden as well. I assume we'll be staying as Devon for this episode. And a couple more emails before we jump into it. One from the head mechanic, see if, see if Aiden and Devon can come down to the garage early on for a few last minute tweaks at the, tra the transmission. An email from Casper say to keep things up. Had a brilliant start to the season, but now is always the risky part. Let's keep the energy up and not take our eyes off the prize. So let's go out to there today, see if it's the last race we'll ever do. Another two more emails from Kay Anderson. The Yarra Valley private tour is booked and confirmed. Oh, big thing there. Nigel Mantle's driving gloves have finally arrived. You're absolutely joking me. Right, so, so obviously, so Aiden was bidding for that. And it turns out that he, he lost he lost that bit and Devon was the winner. Incredible amount of money to spend just to annoy someone. So Devon bought the gloves purely just to annoy Aiden, which is hilarious to me. And one last thing, he said two, she's had two calls from a private clinic. Mentioned something about an appointment you booked, won't talk to me about it. Do you know anything about this? What, what's going on there? What, what's, they, what's that Devon got um, appointments booked at a private clinic for? Is this something he's hiding in particular? I have to wait to see what's going on there. But for, without, without any further ado, we'll jump into the race now. So, chapter 8 then, mid-race. A solid performance in qualifying as a team in a good position at the Australian Grand Prix. Let's jump right in. Here comes Butler. Good pace here down the straight. Into the corner we go. That's a little too late. And he nearly goes off the track on the exit. And is that a lapse in concentration? I think just a little bit of desperate driving there, Crofty. He's pushing way too hard. I mean, there's nobody else around him at this stage. OK, Devon, we're going to have to ease off from the brakes. Is everything OK? Can you hear me? Brakes don't feel right. OK, we'll have a look at it, but you're going to see a drop off in performance, I'm afraid. What? Why? We've asked you to take it easy on the last lap, but pushing has made the issue even worse. So we're just going to have to live with it for now. What are you talking about? Listen, just do what you can, please, Devon. Come on. So once again, then, in that cut scene, a return to the slightly muffled audio. The first it was from Aiden after Bahrain, and now it's from um, Devon's race engineer. So we're, we're in trouble here with Devon Butler. He's falling back. He's got problems with the brakes. The performance of the car is limited. We have our objective here on the left. Hold on to as many places as you can, and a bonus is to finish ahead of our teammate, Aiden Jackson. About five places off us. 
four or five of us right now. On to lap 11 here. Only a few more laps to go, so relatively short chapter to just closing out the Grand Prix. And Carlos Sainz and the Ferrari is all over us here. We're going to come off turn two and make our way down towards the, the right-hander at turn number three. Sainz closing in. Gasly behind him looks to the outside, looks to the outside going into that third corner. And we're, uh, that keeps Sainz behind us at the moment. So we're safe in P9 right now. But coming towards the last couple of corners, we're like, definitely going a bit too deep there. So as we come to the last turn here, Sainz will have DRS on us off that final corner. So he's at the full advantage. And where is Mercy as we charge down this main straight? We're going to try and defend the inside if we can, but Sainz gets there first, pulls underneath, and takes the P9 from us before we even reach turn one. So we're now stuck in a sandwich between both Sainz and Gasly here. We're going to try and get a run back on Sainz if we can. No DRS for us, but a bit of back to it could help us towards the right hand. Once again, going to squeeze Sainz towards the right hand side of the track. Can move to the inside if we can as he comes back across, but Sainz is in front. Well, I'm not going to try and now break in there. We're going to force out Gasly again using some of that more so Devin Butler elbows out sort of style. We have lost the place here so that the P9. Gone, unfortunately. We've got one more point left to try and hold on to on lap number 13 here. Just two and a half laps to go, and Gasly right there behind us is closing in all the time. With DRS to his advantage. He's going to pull to the inside. Let's try out breaking as best we can here. Despite those damage breaks around the outside. Oh, almost losing the car there. Losing the back end on the exit, but saving it just about. And holding on to P10 here, but it's not over yet because Gasly still behind us and not willing to give an inch at all in these last couple of corners on the circuit. Again, got a bit too deep, not on the curbs at all. And again, losing the back end. Not only is the brake struggling, but the tyres might be too. They're you know, trying to defend the inside this time. Gasly with DRS going to follow in our wake as he charge over the line and towards turn one once again. Two more laps to go. Gasly around the outside and takes away P10 to the down to P11 now. And again, they're trying to come back at him here. Contact between ourselves and the Frenchman. And there is Jackson just two places down on us right now. He's got only Piastri separating us. But Gasly with a good enough run thanks to the DRS around the outside into turn three. Again, it's best just to try and fall back into line. So that's more or less all she wrote for this. So this chapter, a relatively short one by comparison to last week, especially given we had a full race last time out. So P11 then for Devin Butler as he rounds the last couple of corners. But again, mystery as to what happened with that team order. Was he told to back off? I have to wait and see just what's going on. But he crosses the line P11 for now. And there's still a lot of unanswered questions in this Australian Grand Prix. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Look, this isn't the first time we've seen Devin Butler go rogue, but the question is, what are Connor Sport going to do about it? Well, it's really hard. As we've seen so many times before, Crofty, in the past, it's so hard to control your drivers. In a way, they're their own entity, but on the top of it, they're, they're working for the team, and that's what you want. Very hard situation to manage. And working for the team, Kasper Ackerman wanted to make a clean break for this year. This does feel, though, that it's something that they might have had to have dealt with last season. It's really not what they wanted. A repeat of what happened in the past, and you cannot let it go on. Can't continue. They're just damaging the reputation of the team and their own reputation as well. They have to sort it out. I'm sure they'll be having words. So it's all changed here in Australia, and as the teams acclimatise to their new standings, so will we. Now, Devon, you didn't respond to a team order today. In Hungary last season, you said it was a comms issue, but Connor Sport claimed they didn't know what that issue was so are they hiding something what's really going on here so they've been questioned by the media then about just what's going on with these missing team orders one last season one this season the smart thing to do is probably to go with the answer on the right not going to fuel okay, anything i say is going to be taken out of context so I, i'd rather not fuel that kind of speculation i'll debrief the team and we'll figure out how we can stop it happening again that's that's all there is to it Devon, you finished the race with a compromised car today. What was that like for you? I was very tempted in this case to use either the left or the bottom arms because I felt that would be a bit more Devon-esque. We're going to go with the one on the right. Devon being honest, it was a pretty tough race. Yeah, it was tough. Tough out there. I mean, uh, I love this track. You know, I know I can do well here. And it's frustrating to deal with anything that slows me down. You know, I didn't like it and the team didn't like it. Now, some have been saying that you do get preferential treatment because your father funds the team. What do you say to those allegations? So one of the first few times here in this series, we've actually got access to both uh, performance and reputation answers here, both being on level four. So in terms of the four answers, we've got uh, the one, the, bit, the best answer we can go for is one on the bottom there. Practical for a team to prioritise their best driver. Although I was tempted to go with one on the left there. I think he actually preferred Aiden did Davidoff. Oh, come on. Listen, a team often needs to prioritise their best driver. No big deal. Happens all the time. So how do you expect Connor Sport to perform this season based on your performance so far? I think the last thing here, again, just to defend the honour of the team here, if the car behaves itself, we can do well. But again, other two answers were very tempting. They, haven't they? So, uh, yeah, I expect us to do pretty well. 
If they can sort out the car this time around, I'll get them all the points their little hearts desire. That's great. Thank you. So there you have it then. Another successful Devon Butler interview to cap off this, this part of the chapter. Post-race then, a promising start turned into a difficult end with Devon having to finish the race with a compromised car. So again, mystery as to what's going on there. Oh, we've got our, our first team principal decision of the season. Casper calling out. Husband? As a result from the last one. So last season, we are given the option to either focus development on last year's car or this year's car. Then we chose to go we chose to go in the middle, if I remember correctly. While some teams have to put in overtime to make it work, it looks at like the early returns on this year's car prove they're able to make strides doing its development so it turns out that was actually a good a good, um, a good decision to make and we are it's, it's showing we're, we're, on, we're on top of things in terms of performance Devon refused to comment what happened out there today speculation is rife what should we say so there's three options here we can either support Devon and say it's a simple misunderstanding uh, choose not to comment and not care if it fuels more speculation until we got to the bottom of the issue or, or criticise Devon and the car so we have some problems we need to address and the smart thing to do is to go with no comment in the middle I feel like that would be the most realistic option to go with so hopefully that, that, does, that does as well down the line so with Casper to close off this chapter we'll go through the news socials and emails after what has been a very entertaining but short episode in this in this chapter in particular so we'll look into the the news article here the case of the missing team order butler pushes despite warning oh phone call coming in and that is from andreo so we'll see what he's got to say i don't think he'll be too happy at all you nip this in the bud Cass. do you hear me andreo butler what was that out there today i will not have a return to last season we are a team he cannot be allowed to do just what he wants look just calm down i have it under control Oh, this is Devon we're talking about. There is no control. He nearly lost the car, Casper. But he didn't. You know what it gets like out there. I'm sure there's an explanation. Or an excuse. And we'll find out. I'll be raising it at the debrief, okay? So I'll report back to you. Uh, okay, um... Hang on. Look, I've got to go. I've got Davidoff on the other line. <laughs> of course you have. Enjoy. I'm sure he'll enjoy that one thoroughly, having to explain to Davidoff just what's going on. So look, look through social media then, based off of um, or the aftermath of the whole thing. But still, again, I'm still very confused as to what's going on with Devon. And this happened after Bahrain when he was speaking to when Aiden tried to speak to him, that little heart to heart at the end, and potentially trying to put a unity between the two in terms of their relationship as teammates. And Devon, I'm assuming, couldn't hear him. It, it was just completely muffled out. And then had this again. In, uh, in Australia. One from Lucas Weber there. Is anyone really surprised? This is a typical Butler peak Devon. We shouldn't be shocked about this kind of behaviour by now. And Devon Hammer defending him. Lucas drives. Please shut up. No one cares about your opinion. So that that's, that same fan account will defend Devon until death, if I'm being entirely honest. So I have to see it, what he has to say over the issue in the next couple of episodes. We'll just see what goes down. Because I assume we'll get an answer to all these questions at some point. People can moan about nepotism all they want. Devin Butler still continues to prove he's the best driver on the team. Hashtag Team Butler. So again, there are some drivers defending him, and or some people defending him, and some some people choosing to think that he's just he's just an idiot and will, and will not listen to the team. So same assumption that was drawn from last year, because there was no real, no answer to that question. Email from the head mechanic. Casper, we've run a full diagnostics check on Devin's car. Won't go over to everything here, but it's not as bad as we looked. Uh, one from Davidoff. Casper, call me as soon as you get this. We need to discuss the party line with regard to what happened today. We all know there's certain things we all temperamental, temperamental come race day, but I will not have the finger pointed at Devon for this one. So Casper's got quite an interesting call to make to the to the owner of Butler Global and, it's, and the inve main investor of the team. And then last one from Casper's wife, Zoe. Saw the race, hope there's not too much drama to deal with, but I guess there already always is, right? Lily's still cheering for Aiden. I'm still cheering for you. Hang in there. So Zoe with the support for Casper, as always, in his brand new role. She was like that in the last breaking point, and she still is now, so it's always good to see. And yeah, that more or less capped things off there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to like, share and subscribe so we can try and close in on 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And until my next video, you guys, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. Have a good day and goodbye.